Thanks, Meryl, and thanks for letting me come to speak. It's really good to be here, and it's really perfect time um, for this project, which is just sort of getting going now, and it's great to sort of hear a lot of the... I hadn't really appreciated how much is going on um, on the ground already, so it's great for us because we're hitting the ground running, lots of people that we need to talk to. Um, so, as you said, um, this is a new project, um, the Climate Action Plans and the Climate Ambassadors Scheme. So we're led by the University of Reading. It's covering the whole of England, but here at Newcastle University, we're leading the bit around the North East, which is really good for me as a North East person, sort of proud to be um, leading the North East. So just a bit of background, um, the big picture. It's estimated that schools account for around 2% uh, of UK greenhouse gas emissions. Now that's apparently the same as the transport and energy sectors for um, Newcastle, um, Manchester and Bristol combined. So that's a lot of emissions. Um, we're also thinking about other aspects of climate change that actually have an impact on school settings. So heat risks in schools are likely um, to increase with higher temperatures. We're already seeing um, in some parts of the country 40 degrees uh, broken. Uh, but also there's over 10,000 schools in England um, at significant, significant risk uh, of getting a flood. And again, with more extreme rainfall, that's going to increase in the future. Um, but we've talked a lot as well about education, and we, I think we saw on some of the earlier slides uh, some of the statistics around you know, teachers and ability to address the, this subject, uh, and also the, the knowledge that school uh, leavers and school students really have an enthusiasm to pick up, but they want to learn more um, about this. So, um, Department for um, Education, which I'm not a spokesperson for, but as I say, they're funding this project. Um, their vision of their sustainability and climate change strategy says uh, that the UK uh, is to be the leading educational sector in sustainability and climate change by 2030. So this initiative hopefully will contribute to that. Um, and this initiative doesn't just cover schools, it's early years, settings, uh, trusts, colleges, up to universities as well. Uh, they've identified those five key areas. We've talked a lot about climate education, um, green skills and careers, um, education, state, digital infrastructure. So thinking about risks um, from climate extreme weather, uh, things about operations and supply chains, and then an international, so how the education sector can be an exemplar uh, for wider um, education across the world. So I guess a little bit of this is the kind of mechanistic element um, that David uh, mentioned earlier. And as I say, that will come into the fact that by 2025, uh, the DfE want all education settings to have a nominated sustainability lead and put in place a climate action plan. So that's where this project is coming. It's here to support um, education settings in developing this climate action plan. So what is a climate action plan? So it's about creating an action plan that will allow education settings to take an approach uh, not just towards um, um, setting a set of actions, but also um, implementing them and educating them. Uh, they envisage an action plan as having these four key elements. So decarbonisation, so thinking about how the school or other education settings can actually reduce their impact on the uh, climate change, reducing their emissions. Now that's something that's often strikes a hard, high profile, but as we just heard, there are other areas that perhaps don't get as much attention. So an action plan also needs to think about how to adapt to extreme weather, how to become more resilient. So with this increasing uh, temperatures, um, thinking about the sort of building stock, a lot of, I guess, in school settings, in not permanent education, uh, building settings or uh, settings that are needed uh, re refurbishment. So it's thinking about that and how can those be made more resilient to future changes in weather and climate. Um, biodiversity we've heard about, and one of the partners on this is the um, National uh, Education Parks are at the back, so they know more about this um, um, than me, but they're actually part of this initiative as well. I've got a little slide on that, but um, you're the guys to speak to because you know all about this. And then, of course, the other fourth and final component is climate education, and I don't think these all sit in discrete you know, pockets, as we saw from, I think it was from the Gosforth School, um, producing an eco-classroom and a building project can also be used as part of an educational experience as well. So it's not about how these all sit as unique um, things within a plan, but how they could um, complement each other. And it, it, this isn't prescriptive, so an education, uh, an action plan um, would actually be driven by, you know, the particular setting. So it may be that 
there's a need to focus on one or more of these. So it's not a prescriptive, you must do X, Y, and Z. It's about tailoring it to the particular um, context. So what will be provided? Well, there's a sister project um, to the Climate Ambassadors project uh, that's going to provide a digital hub. Uh, and that's going to feature a lot of signposts to training, resources, best practices, it says there. Uh, lots of tools on there, and sort of our project, the Climate Ambassadors, will be linked through that, so this will be complementary. But the Climate Ambassadors project itself is essentially building on an existing network, which you may be familiar with, that STEM Learning have been involved with. Um, and it's building a series of regional um, Climate Ambassadors that will come out, they're donating their time, and come out and help schools in developing these climate action plans. So it could be in the area of climate education, but it could be thinking about decarbonizing uh, the building, the school, or thinking about um, adapting building stock, etc. So it's addressing any of those areas of a climate action plan. It might even be, if you're just at the start of it, what is a climate action plan? And, and an ambassador could help with that. So how will it work? So a bit of context, yeah, the ambassador scheme was launched uh, by University of Reading in collaboration with STEM Learning. Uh, so far supported over 500 schools and colleges in the UK. And this new initiative, there's £2 million of uh, funding. That's nat nationally across England, not all coming to us, unfortunately. Otherwise, we could do loads of cool stuff in the North East. But um, led by the University of Reading and the Alliance for Sustainability Leadership in Education. So they're a charity that works primarily with the uh, university and uh, FE sector. But they've got a lot of resource and a lot of expertise um, in this area and working with STEM Learning as well, to kind of build on this existing network of climate ambassadors and grow it at a regional level. So this is the different regions. So we're obviously the Northeast region. Um, you can see there Newcastle University. So what we will do is we'll be employing, we've got money from the DfE to employ someone for two years um, to actually grow this network. So recruiting ambassadors, identifying that not just academics, but people in industry that are working in this area, people that run green businesses, people that perhaps work in the technology sector that are developing new technology uh, that might be able to contribute expertise if they're able to donate their free time um, in this area. But also engaging uh, with education settings, so reaching out uh, to people like you, uh, letting, letting you know the support that's available and pointing you to, uh, to resources and to recruit, uh, to pair you up I guess, with an appropriate climate ambassador that can help you. And it might be that during the lifetime of an action plan, you actually need a number of different uh, pieces of support from different ambassadors. So to make a big national change, then we need to bring together business expertise uh, as well to do with the education sector. Um, they're going to provide very tailored guidance, um, support in a number uh, of different ways. So again, might be supporting you with your climate action plan, maybe from starting it from scratch, or it may be building on your existing plan. You maybe you've got to the point where you actually need someone with a bit more detailed knowledge and uh, what this will do, this will facilitate that. Um, be able to deliver training to teachers, governors, leaders, uh, sustainability uh, representatives. Uh, part of our job is to develop some of these resources as well, but clearly there's a lot out there, so it's identifying perhaps where the gaps are. And this is a bit of a learning thing we're going through, and at the moment is trying to find out we don't want to duplicate what's already out there. And pointing to, again, pointing to resources uh, that exist. So that's many of the organizations perhaps in this room. So yeah, I'll just, I won't sort of dwell on this because the guys are here and you can hear it straight, straight from them. But we've got a number of national partners, one of which is the National uh, Education Nature Park. So clearly uh, emphasis, uh, they do a lot of great work on biodiversity. And there's a great little uh, web resource there. You can see where uh, what you get the students to do is do some uh, work on the biodiversity on their school grounds, perhaps, and feed that information in. And people can, uh, other students can then look at that and use that as a resource and a teaching resource. But as I say, speak to, speak to them there, because these are really good uh, part of the project, really essential part of the project, got a lot of expertise in this area. And I'm going to go and build a terrarium now at home as well, which is really good. So we've got other partners on. We've got um, EAUC. Uh, we've got a number of charities. We've got STEM Learning, uh, people like Hopscotch, Net Zero, Go, Go, Let's Go Zero UK, which have built up their own network of experts in decarbonisation. I'm conscious Meryl's coming over to me. Am I doing all right for time? Yeah. Uh, and so what to do with the call for action? Well, we're kind of in the initial phase. We're sort of building up this network at the moment. So 
the sort of web portal and things aren't yet all up there, but please, you know, start to engage with us now. We're building up our contacts. So I'll put my contacts up there. Um, you can find more about STEM learning uh, through that link. Um, so, but we're happy to talk to you now and find out what, what you might need and talk, take your details. We're in the process, hopefully very soon, of recruiting our hub manager. So we haven't gone out to advertise that post yet. That's the person that will be really on the ground doing most of this. It won't be uh, myself or Haley will be leading it, but this, this is the person that's going to be reaching out and interacting and uh, building this network. Um, so, yeah, please get in touch. I'll be hanging around after the event if people want to find out more as well. Because I know um, you've got to move on. Yeah. Thank you so much, Stephen. <laughs> Have, having been trying to... Are you OK? Um, having yeah, been... I'm holding my pocket and the click has gone down. <laughs> <laughs> Things you can't plan for. That wasn't in my risk assessment, trying to rescue the go. clicker. Hey! Um, so, um, having been trying to support environmental education for the last seven years, it is so much needed that it's driven from the top. And I'm delighted that Newcastle is one of the centres for the DfE's um, climate hubs. Um, do we have any questions? It's, it's early days for uh, Stephen and the team, and his team that's not even yet been identified. Um, although I do have a really suitable candidate, but I'll talk about that later. <laughs> not, not, not me. Um, You've already told me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got too many. I've got too much to do. Um, but anyway, does it, do we have any questions um, about uh, the new climate hub um, for, for education in the northeast? Again, it was a very quiet audience. We need another workshop to get you really buzzing again. So we're going to go straight into that. Oh, oh, so David. It's lovely to be on first name terms with so many people. Thank you, Meryl. Um, yeah, I would ask this, but uh, there seems to be a gap in the market in, in all these things in terms of um, where's the leadership for sustainability training? And I'm talking about, as I was talking about earlier, the, the top leadership. Um, because there are all sorts of different aspects to it in terms of systems, thinking, um, holistic approaches, school improvement generally. There, there appears to be a lack of um, lack of that within all this. I mean, I think all of this is great, but it just needs to be a little gap in the market, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, I think certainly within the role of what this project will do, this is going to provide training, certainly training to ambassadors, um, but there will be pointers to where training is. So one of the partners, for example, in the northwest is Manchester Metropolitan University, and they run a successful program on um, sort of climate carbon decarbonisation um, and they're making that training available to people as part of this uh, ambassadors scheme so the ambassadors will come with that training so to attempt to grow that and I think a big role of this my feeling from being here today is as well sort of trying to find out where things are and point people to it a bit more because I mean there's so much already going on that I wasn't aware of and I think hopefully this can act to sort of bring things together a bit hopefully and maybe identify where the gaps are, yeah, if there are existing gaps um, that we need to be built on, yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, I don't, I'd like to add, um, Stephen's talk mentioned Let's Go Zero. Um, Let's Go Zero is an organisation that's trying to encourage decarbonisation in schools. You can sign up, um, as a, but you need your SLT to actually set, agree to it. So that might be a great way of getting those conversations started because they run campaigns and competitions um, to really try and promote um, um, decarbonisation of the school estate rather than it's not curriculum based resources but they are they definitely have um, a growing uh, um, a growing uh, what's, what am I trying what's the word presence in yeah. this space that's growing the network, one. growing network yeah. um, Joanne hold on and I was going to say in the northeast even better than than because they let's go zero don't have a space in the northeast yet. They're, to they're talking about it, but they haven't done it. So the one that is in our space at the moment, um, Joanne and the team from Oasis Northeast do amazing work with climate-friendly schools. Um, definitely, definitely um, sporting our northeast roots here. Um, go and go and speak to Joanne and the team um, because they they really have done some inspirational work and Richhurst um, with Durham schools and things. So it's worth finding out about what's going on up here rather than waiting for the national people to come up to there because levelling up just seems so slow. Um, anyway, so thank you very very much, Stephen. Um, we're going to move on. Yeah. Thank you.